Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is good to be together on this day. Many of us come to this time and this place of worship with heavy hearts, and we'll speak more about that after the children's lesson this morning. But I'm very glad you are here. It feels so important to be together, to worship God and to name our grief and our gratitude for being in community. So welcome to worship. Um, I have some announcements I want to share with you. Uh, first is this. We are holding a high holy party to here in our parking lot at 4 o'clock today. It's called Trunk or Treat. Um, it's our chance to welcome the neighborhood, to give kids a safe place to trick or treat. And it's your excuse to dress up and look foolish and probably eat a little bit of candy. Um, so I hope that you'll come whether you decorate the trunk of your car or not. This is a wonderful opportunity to welcome our neighbors and to invite them into the spirit of play uh, that we seek to cultivate here at this church. Because if you can't play well together, all kinds of trouble happens. Um, also want to let you know that our Child Care and Family Resource Center is having a trick-or-treat parade at 11.45 on Wednesday, on Halloween actually. So if you'd like to come and hand out treats, pardon? 10.45? I lied. 10.45, good thing Gail knows things. I wrote it down somewhere. Yes, it says 10.45 on Wednesday. Um, thank you, Gail. Uh, 10.45, the children will be uh, doing uh, some trick-or-treating in the narthex of the church, so come. Don't bring nuts or hard candy, but bring a treat to share with the children, and um, we get to savor their joy at that time. Uh, Warren Thompson is not well today. He was teaching a class on the Psalms. He'll offer uh, the next class sometime in December. So uh, stay tuned for that and pray for Warren's healing. And lastly, you might notice in your bulletin two different things, one of which is this sheet right here. We're in the time of our church year of looking at how it is we are stewards of the gifts God has given us. In other words, how do we use our time and our talents uh, in order to build hope in this world? That's why the church is here. So you will see a list of many, many, many ways you can participate in the ministry of this church. And I assume that all of you will have a pen in your hands because I'm going to stand here for a little while while you read the list. No kidding. Rustle in your purse. Borrow a pen. Um, we're going we're gonna to take the time uh, during the beginning of worship this morning to say, all right, God, how do you want to use me in ministry? If you're not able to get out of your home uh, because you have mobility issues, you can always put, I'm interested in and passionate about, at the bottom, praying for the well-being of the church or doing something else that you can do. We're all called by God to use our gifts. So we're going to take a little bit of time to fill these out. Be sure and put your name and your email address, and if you would um, put these in the offering plate, this morning. Um, I expect that the offering plates will be so full they won't be able to be brought forward. So let's take a little bit of time for you to be able to do that. Even if you're not doing it, look down because I'll see you looking up. You have to look like you're doing it. I'll harass you. It's true. So please, let's fill this out. I'm looking up in the balcony, too. Just so you know, balcony people. This church could not exist without the passionate engagement of all of you. You bless this community through the ways that you say yes to using your gifts and your time and your talent. 
You may think what you do is small. I'm telling you, it's huge. Whether you're handing out bulletins or whether you're praying for the well-being of this church, you are engaged in vibrant ministry. So I thank you. And if it's too fast for you to be able to fill this out this morning, um, I hope that we'll see one with every person's name here. Uh, because this movement of grace and hope here in the city of Rochester has need of you. So um, thank you for doing that. Lastly, I just want to announce that uh, we'll have a Meet the Artist uh, opportunity following worship this morning. Uh, Gary Hicks is one of our ushers. He's done stunning photography work, and he'll be talking a little bit about what it is he's been up to and how it is he does his uh, photography uh, artistry uh, and that'll be in the fireside room I hope you'll join him we rise as you're able and let's join in singing Join me, please, for a time of prayer. Gracious God, we come before you on this day knowing so full well that we are frail as the dust. And we seek to live as those inspired by your breath, a breath which moves us in the ways of love, and of reconciliation, and of compassion, and of grace. We thank you on this day for the beauty of our beleaguered earth. We pray for the wisdom to be stewards of the abundance that you have gifted us with, the wonderful, full richness of October air. 
the sweetness of the water we drink, the ways that we are connected to all that is and all that shall be, the generations to come, help us to tend this world in such a way that our grandchildren will be able to sing praise through the beauty of your earth. We thank you for the joy of children and adults who are willing to get silly in the face of All Saints Day, for the opportunity to dress ourselves up and take ourselves out and be present in community in such a way that we share joy and laughter, even as we acknowledge the day of the dead, the ways that we are, your people of dust, your people of grace. We thank you for the power you give us to say yes to life, yes to paying attention to this life, yes to taking the action that we can in order to build this world better, stronger, more grace-filled. So hear us on this morning as we pray the prayer your son taught us, made new through our own hearts as we pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, Holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. I would like to invite the children forward and also Jamie and Jacob Hansen, if you would come forward to come on up. Thank you. We are uh, in confirmation class, which is a class for people who are in middle school and their parents. Pastor Katie and I are teaching confirmation together. And so we all join together at the beginning and then the, the youth go off with Pastor Katie and I get to spend time with the parents, which is like so good. I can't even tell you, it's one of my favorite parts of the week. But what we were talking about, I love those ears. You're welcome. Um, what we were talking about was seeds because we are learning the same lessons that we're learning on Sunday morning. And one of the things that they were talking about was the power of being able to get the crops out of the fields because all of these seeds have been planted in the earth and the sun had caused them to rise and there had been all kinds of good fullness. But when the rains came so strongly, you were worried that... We were worried about getting the crops out of the fields. How many of you have been praying for our farmers that the crops would come out of the fields? So what they offered to do was to bring seeds this morning. Take a look at those seeds in the packets. Can you tell me, good sir, Jacob Hansen, what kind of seeds are we looking at here? We're looking at wheat seeds and corn. Corn seeds. How many of you have seen corn seeds before? Raise the bag you think is the corn seeds. Bravo, those are corn seeds and raise the bag that you think might be wheat seeds. Yes, and those grow and grow and grow and grow. Did you know that one of the things that we are taught is that we are like seeds? Do you believe it? You start out really small. How many of you were babies one time? How many of you were babies one time? All right, yes you were. What? Yes, because he knows a song about growing and being a seed and growing big. And what we say is inside of you, not only is a seed that became a baby, which is you, beautiful you, and now you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but you are going to grow into the only you there ever was. Is that amazing to you? 
That's amazing to me. So there will never be another you in the whole world. And do you see the pictures on the stole that I'm wearing today? Are all these children the same? No. no. How are they different? Yes, what's one way? They have different colored skin, and they will grow to be as beautiful as God made them to be. What else is different about these children? They have different color eyes. How many of us have different colored eyes? And we're going to grow to be people who look different from each other, the same ones, I know. Well, how else are they different? Do you see any other differences? Yes. They're wearing different clothes. They're from different places. They're going to grow up differently because they're growing up in different places. One other difference. And then I'll let you go. Different clothes, yep, their hair is different. Are they all boys? No. Are they all girls? No. All kinds of different things. How many of you are the only one that there will ever be of you? Come on, everybody. The only one. It's a miracle. So there is a seed that God planted, and you are going to grow up to be the only, only, only person exactly like yourself. Is that good news? It's a miracle. That's what I call it. So will you pray with me? Pray with me. They do speak different languages, wouldn't you think? So, dear God, you can repeat after me. How's that? Dear God, thank you for making me. Thank you for being with me while I grow. Thanks for making me totally different from anyone else. Thanks for making me totally different from anyone else. And thanks for not making me a corn seed. Thanks for not making me a corn seed. Amen. Amen. All right. Off you go. Your Sunday school teachers are right there. You could write a song about that, couldn't you? <laughs> what I think is very important in children's lessons is to get the children very riled up and then send them off to Sunday school. children having to grow up in a world where they fear coming to church. So I wanted for us to wait for a time to consider how it is that in the city of Pittsburgh, 11 people who were at worship in order to name a child lost their lives. Six people were injured seeking to help them in Squirrel Hill. I want to be able to name on this day that weapons of destruction were sent through the U.S. mail to people who had been targeted because of the powerful, horrible ways that hate speak has become our national language, it seems. I wanted to name the heartbreak of knowing that there are thousands of people who are so desperate for food and shelter and fullness of life that they're willing to take to the road and walk through Mexico in order to find a better life and they will be met with what? So this morning we bring before God our hearts and our longings and our sorrow and our willingness to say that this is not the world we want to hand to our children. So I share with you this reading from the prophet Jeremiah. It speaks of how it is that our core grounding is not allegiance to any nation. Our core grounding is to the teachings of God as we encounter it in scripture, as we experience it in our lives, as our tradition has handed down, and as our reason tells us, must bear the fruit of love and compassion, or it is foul, right? 
So these words from the prophet Jeremiah. After we hear this reading, the choir will sing for us a blessing and an intention. We will have some time after Pastor Katie speaks of silence. And then we will sing together this hymn that you were given as you came in. This hymn was written yesterday. I cannot tell you what it means to me that we are an outpost of resistance here in the middle of the city of Rochester. We are a people who live the way and the heart of Jesus Christ, which is the way of love, brothers and sisters. Hear the word of God spoken through our Hebrew brothers and sisters and the prophet Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be planted like a tree by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and I search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. May God grant us the courage to be witnesses of God's peace.
Before we take time to sing this hymn together, we're going to take a moment of silence. This moment of silence is not to be a lack of substance. A time of silence is a moment of meditation and prayer, a space where we can open up our hearts to be listening for where God's promise and presence is in the face of tragedy. Also a moment to remember and think of the names of those who have died. Also a moment to lift up Rabbi Michelle Warner in your prayers and to walk the footsteps in your mind from this church to B'nai Israel Synagogue, which is maybe a three-minute walk away. So will you quiet your hearts with us and join us in this moment of silence. hearts do cry out with one another. Will you rise as you're able to stand with us in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters and sing.
Amen. You may be seated. I hope that throughout this service you continue to get a sense that these small little check marks you put as you fill out your connect card form, all the little ways that you speak out against hatred and violence, all the ways that you share good in this world are being planted and are growing in this place into something big and beautiful. So as we share our offerings, let us consider the ways, small and large, that we are living and loving as Christ teaches us in this place. God, we lift up our hands and our feet and our minds and all of our gifts that we give and we ask that you would take all that we have and all that we are and use them to transform this church and this world. Make us instruments of your peace, O oh God, we pray. God, you are glory. We come before you to ask that you would use Christ United Methodist Church to broadcast your grace. 
Use us to serve you and our neighbors. Call us to boldly and tenderly reveal your glory. Stir us and lead us to be your witnesses. Wake us up and plant possibility in our hearts. We pray through the powerful heart of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So we are in a season now where we are reading through the parables of Jesus. Parables being stories that we can turn around over and over again and look in different directions and look in different contexts and we can see different parts of this world and of our lives and unpack these stories in a million different ways. We're also in a season where there's a lot of talk about spending. What we spend our time on, what we spend our energy on, what we spend our voting time on, what we spend our money on. I don't know about you, but I'm getting harassed when I open my mailbox out comes a flood of letters and pamphlets of people trying to get me to vote for them right now. I'm also getting text messages. I don't know who got my phone number, but people are texting me about voting in some way. I must have signed something at some point that gave people my information. And we're also starting the holiday shopping season and spending what feels like a gazillion dollars on a single bag of candy. How in the world is chocolate that expensive? And we are in this season also at this church talking about stewardship. As the whole rest of the world is wanting our attention and our money and our time, we take this intentional space to open up, to be away from all of the advertisements and to actually consider how it is we want to spend our money and our time in ways that truly matter. In moments like these, when we experience tragedy, we stop taking moments for granted. We start recognizing that spending our time and our money in meaningful ways is not something that we get to do in retirement that we can push off. It's something that we must do now, because now is all we have. Pastor Elizabeth talked last week about the precious you can go back online if you want to hear her Gollum Lord of the Rings impersonation, which I listened to multiple times just to make me happy, about investing in the precious and what is truly meaningful and what matters in our lives. The story about Jesus inviting us to give up the quick fixes away from buying that instant garbage. Do you ever buy something and you know that you're going to throw it away within less than a day? Maybe you need a phone charger, and you're at basically anything you buy at a gas station. is something that you know probably is not going to work, but you put your false hope in the sense that maybe these $5 headphones will actually work and not actually break my ears, but it never does quite work out that way. Jesus wants us to move away from that, away from the instant garbage, away from the quick fixes. So our story this morning is Jesus talking about some substance that comes from the earth. Again, another small substance, but not the oyster, not the pearl. This week, we're talking about the seeds that Jamie and Jacob demonstrated. So we hear the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. And though it is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds can come and perch in its branches. Truly, I tell you, Jesus says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, 
You can say to this mountain in front of you, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And Jesus told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all the way through the dough. So this morning I want to invite us into three reflections, three takeaways that I got from reading these texts this week. And the first is this, small things can make a huge difference. Small things make a huge difference. This may be one of the more obvious parts of this lesson. This seems to be what Jesus says pretty explicitly. Jesus is emphasizing over and over again how tiny this little seed is and how it becomes such a big tree and that such small things can even move mountains. But it's worth meditating on, especially in light of the happenings in Pittsburgh, because we certainly feel the effects of how disastrous problems grow when people share only the negative little things that build up to negative big things. Have you ever heard of the phrase, death by paper cuts? It's a little bit like that. You have those days where nothing particularly tragic happens, but it's the little things that add up over and over again, the devil being in the details. We definitely feel those kinds of days where at the end of the day, all you want to do is yell and cry and be upset, and you're not even really sure why. This is an important analogy this morning Because things like hate crimes and tragedies, we're not born wanting to be people of mass destruction. We're not people who go from zero to hate crime. We're people who are formed over and over and over again, day by day, by the little things. We're formed by the little, tiny, good, and beautiful things. And we're also formed by those tiny comments and jokes, comments of disgust, comments of neglect, tiny paper cuts of disrespect for one another. That is where a hate crime is born. So we need to pay attention to these little things, these little beautiful things and these little tragic things things in our lives because these are things that form us and these form the world around us and become something giant. We don't always realize the good things when they add up, so we need to take time to be intentional about how we share them. Things like a couple dollars in those Salvation Army buckets, things like knowing and saying someone's name maybe even a cashier in line with their name tag. Good and bad both spread so quickly, these small things. So we in this place can commit today to choose to share the good. I heard a story from a family in our congregation this week that I asked permission to share that relates to the power of these small acts. The Ackerman family, Brent Ackerman is the father of Logan Ackerman, and Logan's mother, Brent's wife, is Lori. And they are regular volunteers here in the youth ministry, and Logan is a part of our high school youth ministry and confirmation here at Christ Church. And Brent and I had coffee this last week. We were walking downtown together and talking. And in case you don't know the Ackerman family, although they're a little bit of everywhere. Brent is, works with Rochester Fest, and Lori and Logan are often involved with a million different things going on with the theaters in town. Logan is usually in 
three-ish plays at a time. One being his Rochester High School play, but then usually also one or two in the community theaters in town. He also has a YouTube channel called Random Logan, and he fills, films himself, and he has over 1,700 subscribers. I don't know 1,700 people, I'm pretty sure. Plus, Logan is in high school, as in I'm pretty sure he's passing high school. So I'm not sure when he sleeps, and I'm a little jealous of his productivity. I had assumed that theater was always a part of Brent and Lori's lives, forever and ever. I thought maybe that they had met in a play, because to me, they seem like such a theater family. But no. It turns out Logan's older brother, Andy, who is more than, more than 10 years older than him, used to like making videos as a teenager. And he liked to use Logan as an actor in his, in his videos. Well, I guess Brent didn't actually call him an actor. He said that Logan was probably more likely being used as some sort of prop, because he was only three. And many of you are parents, and maybe some of you have kids who are about this same age gap. How often do they play together nicely? Probably not very often. More likely a teenage boy would be trying to get money to babysit this child, or uh, maybe would just ignore the person, or maybe sort of torture the child, rather than be a good friend. But no, Andy engaged Logan in his videos, and three-year-old Logan loved it. He started asking, as soon as he could talk, to make videos and participate in these plays. His first audition for a play was as a five-year-old. And now his passion has grown to involve the whole family where everyone can find a role and be involved. One little act of creativity, one act of generosity beyond the traditional family roles, and it changes the course of a family's life. Our second lesson from this parable this morning is that good soil matters. We must investigate the soil. This Rochester community, especially our Hanson family and all of you, many of you have farmers in your background or grew up in a farm family. How many of you have some sort of farm connection in your life? Yeah. And that's not because we have the most beautiful tropical weather for growing plants in Minnesota. It's a great place to be a farmer because of the soil. It's important a seed can be as good as a seed wants to be, but if it's planted in bad soil, it's not going to go well. It's only when a seed is planted in good soil that it can grow to be this big, powerful, abundant mustard tree. So we also, when we are planting our mustard seeds and spending our time and our money and our lives, we need to be picky about what we're investing in. As Americans, this might be one of the hardest lessons for us to learn. We have so much in abundance, and as Jesus says in another parable, for those, from those to whom much is given, much will be required. We have so many choices to make every day. Walking into the grocery store can be overwhelming with all the different brands of sweetened condensed milk you could buy. Not just one type of milk, but different types and different brands, it can be very overwhelming. It's a blessing. But there are so many people spending so much money in advertising, seeking to manipulate the ways we think and the way we buy. There are so many people who want us to buy the instant garbage. There are also many people who are invested in us being frustrated or fighting with each other, for us being unhappy so that we'll try to buy something to make us feel better. I saw a video that talked about America's spending habits, specifically in that season, which is coming up in less than a month over the Thanksgiving weekend. In 2014, Americans spent $50.9 billion over Thanksgiving weekend. And yes, plenty of that was spent in hospitality and in gifts 
getting ready for giving to their friends and family. But it wasn't all presents. Each person spent on average $380 that weekend, and more than half of the shoppers spent $127 on self-giving. That's definitely me included, because I usually buy a new pair of moccasins every good Black Friday. But the video I saw put these gifts into a different perspective. It said that that money spent another way could have provided 200 days of clean drinking water for 25 children. Or that money could have given 1,397 meals to Americans facing hunger. Or that money could have immunized 697 children with the polio vaccine. I share this not to make anyone feel guilty about their spending habits, so don't, I'm, this is me as much as everyone else, and presents are fun, and gift giving is many people's love language, and why not spend money on things when things are on sale with a great deal, like on Black Friday? But it's good and helpful to put things in perspective sometimes with money. Every time we spend a dollar on something, we are voting for the kind of world we want to live in, when I spend $4 on a PSL, does anyone know what a PSL is? Pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> I really like certain PSLs, but those are $4, and that is money that I'm choosing to spend on that, and I'm never gonna get that back or spend it on anything else worthwhile. So we have to ask ourselves sometimes, is this PSL money a mustard seed that will be planted into the kind of soil that's going to burst mustard seed goodness into all the world? Or will my little happiness seed be planted and live for a moment and then stay right where it is? This is a community I've experienced that pays a lot of attention to these nickels and dimes and dollars and takes them pretty seriously in a lot of places. For instance, in this thrift on fifth thrift store we have downstairs, they have made thousands of dollars for Thrive Scholarships by selling clothes for only a dollar or less. And in our Rochester high schools, our three of our Rochester public schools, every Christmas season, they are charged with sort of a business mentality. And they make contests and they put on performances and they, as these three schools, usually raise over $100,000 for Rochester charities with pocket change. Every single dollar that we spend is a vote for the world we want to live in. So are we being intentional with the soil that we are planting ourselves and our dollars in in this season? Our third lesson we learn from these mustard seeds is the less fun part for some of us. And that is that we must go all in. Big change is a marathon and not a sprint. It takes perseverance. If we want to live in the kind of country we've been talking about, a country without these tragedies that we experience, far too often. It's not just one day or one vigil or one moment that makes all the difference. It is moment and moment and moment after another, day by day by day, of working for peace and consistency and over time that we create the kind of change and create the kind of world we want to be living in. We all want to be doing these amazing, big, tree, awesome things for the kingdom of God. We want to live in this beautiful and powerful and peaceful and radical world. Who wouldn't want to change the world with our creator of the universe? But this big growth takes time and patience, despite what all the advertisements want us to think. If something promises quick results or promises change with the swipe of a credit card, then it's probably not worth buying. One of my favorite poems is one that we've had in the bulletin in various phases 
over the last few years. It's pretty long in itself. But there's a one clip of it. It's a poem by Wendell Berry, the Mad Farmer Liberation Front. And in one of his sections, it says this, ask the questions that have no answers. Invest in the millennium. Plant sequoias. Say that your main crop is the forest that you did not plant, that you will not live to harvest. Say that the leaves are harvested when they have rotted into the mold. Call that profit. Prophesy such returns. We are called to plant in this good soil in ways that might not even be fully fulfilled by the end of our lifetime, to recognize that the work we are doing is not just about spending some money, but it's also investing our whole selves, our relationships, our presence, our thoughts, and our prayers, and our energy. We are called to let our roots spread and deepen in this place and in the places to us that truly, deeply matter. And then we can know and hope and trust that we are not investing in instant garbage, that all these investments we know God is using, that God is blessing and transforming, and we can have all the faith and hope to know that we are creating a tree that the birds will be able to nest in. So it is overwhelming thinking about all these things we can be doing in this world. It's overwhelming, and it's a lot to think about. But in this whole process, we get to remember that we serve a good and a wild and an all-powerful God. We get to serve an energized spirit that cannot be stopped. We are created not to just be seeds that get planted one time and stop right in that soil, but we are planted as a weed, as a weed of wild mustard that takes over the spaces where it's growing, whether or not we're ready for it. Where you are now and all that you have right now, this is all you need to start to be a part of God's kingdom and world transforming work. We don't have time to waste and we don't have time to wait. So let us go all in and be the seeds of transformation in this space and in all the spaces we encounter. Amen. So we are going to sing and we're going to go back to this second page, this first page in the bulletin. We're going to sing, Lord, I want to be a Christian. So turn to your red United Methodist hymnal to 402. Will you rise and sing with us?
create the kind of world we want to live in. We don't have to be big heroes. We can start small because God is using even our mustard seeds of smiles and joy and goodness that we share with one another. And God is using this to transform the world. So go in the peace and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be kind to one another and play as often as you can. Amen.